And the last matter, Amado Dembele and others brought against the Republic of Mali. Honorable President, the applicant for Dominic Demian, Advocate Jebra Kembole, and for Ziggy Yimana Zebron, Advocate William Ernest, are represented. I think they are online. The respondent state and the matters against the United Republic of Tanzania are also represented. I believe they are online. They had indicated their availability. Uh, the applicant for the case against the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, as well as the respondent, did not confirm their availability. The applicant for the case against Mali, Advocate Zadi Philip and Maitre Mariam Dawara, also indicated their availability and they are online. I submit, Honorable President. Merci, Monsieur le Greffier. Premier affaire. Thank you, Registrar. The first matter is go to and others in the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire. This will be read by Honorable Judge Bless Chikaya. Honorable Judge, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, President. In the matter of to go to and others versus the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, Consolidated Applications Numbers 17-2019-018-2019 and 019-2019. The court composed of Imani Di Abud President, Modibo Saku Vice President, Ben Kyoko, Rafa Benashu, Suzanne Menge, Tujilan Chuzumila, Chafika Ben Saula, Tujilan Chuzumila, Chafika Ben Saula, Bless Chikaya, Stella Anuka, Teresa, Denis Ajay, Dumisa, Tebeza Denis Ajay, Judges and Robert Eno Registrar. Subject of the application, facts of the matter. It emerges from the record that on the evening of 27 March 2013, while on his way home, Zebo Seydou, a lawyer by professionals, attacked by four individuals armed with Kalashnikov rifles and pistols. They robbed him of a sum of money and his briefcase containing various items. In the days that followed, the same lawyer came under repeated death threats issued from three telephone numbers. On 29 March 2013, he filed a complaint against unknown persons for robbery and death threats made through anonymous telephone calls and messages. Following investigations carried out by the criminal police, it emerged that one of the telephone numbers belonged to one of the, the applicants, while the other numbers were respectively those of his nephew and the public telephone booth. Arrested by the criminal police, the first applicant admitted to making phone threats to kill advocate Zebo Seydou in revenge for having been fired from his job as security guard at the latest law firm, it also emerges from the record that he admitted to being the instigator of the 27 March 2013 attack on the lawyer with the help of the other two applicants who were both members of the Republican forces of Côte d'Ivoire assigned to the presidential motorcade. In addition to participating in the robbery, they were responsible 
for renting the vehicle and providing the firearms used in the robbery, as well as for trailing the lawyer. By judgment of 23rd April 2013, the Abidjan District Court found them guilty of gang robbery, illegal possession of firearms, and issuing of death threats and sentenced them to 20 years in prison. On 25 February 2015, the Abidjan Court of Appeal upheld the district court's judgment in its entirety, believing that they were not afforded a fair trial the applicants filed an application before this court. Prayers of the parties. The applicants pray the court to order the respondent state to take the following measures to remedy their incarceration, namely, presidential pardon, commutation of their 20 years prison sentence to a less severe sentence, conditional release, amicable settlement, financial compensation for the harm suffered due to the unfair judicial decisions handed down on them. The respondent state praised the court in turn to declare that it lacks jurisdiction to hear the application to find that the application does not meet the admissibility requirements under Article 56.5 of the Charter and dismiss the application and all of the applicant's requests. The court deliberated this matter. Its motivations are found in paragraph 38 and 39. I will now give you the operative part. For these reasons, the court unanimously on jurisdiction declares that it has jurisdiction. On admissibility, the court upholds the objection to admissibility and declares the ad application inadmissible. On terms of cost, it orders each party to bear its own cost. The following judges signed this. The judges indicated above signed this particular ruling done at Arusha this fourth day of month of the June in the year 2024 in French and English, the French text being authoritative. This is therefore the court ruling. Thank you, President. This is the decision of the court. Matter number 0, 41, Damien against the Republic, United Republic of Tanzania. This will be read by Honorable Judge Stella Anuka. Thank you. United Republic of Tanzania, application number 048-2016, and this judgment is delivered today, the 4th of June, 2024. The court, composed of Modipo Sako, Vice President Ben Kyoko, Rafa Ben Ashu, Susan Menge, Tujilani R. Chizomila, Shafika Ben Saola, Blaze Shikaya, Stella I. Anukam, Domisa B. Nsabesa, Dennis D. Ajay, the judges of the court, and Robert Eno, the registrar. In accordance with Article 22 of the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the Establishment of an African Court on Human and People's Rights, hereinafter referred to as the Protocol, and Rule 9 sub 2 of the Rules of Court, hereinafter referred to as the Rules, 
Justice Imani G. Abud, the president of the court, and the national of Tanzania did not hear this application. The applicant in this case is represented by advocate Jebra Kaboli of the Law Guard Advocates and the United Republic of Tanzania, the respondent in this case, is represented by Dr. Boniface Najala Luhandi, the Solicitor General from the Office of the Solicitor General and two others. The facts of the matter. It emerges from the record before the court that on the 27th of August, 2007, the applicant and his brother, Daniel, who is not a party to the present application, asserted their mother, Estella Damian, with sticks at the Kiwa Jakula village in Karagua district. Kagara region in Tanzania. Upon arrival of her husband at the scene, Estella Damian told him that Dominic and Daniel, her children, assaulted her and also tried to set her on fire. The victim subsequently died due to the assault. The applicant was arrested on the same day at his home after the village executive officer reported the incident to the police. On the 14th of December, 2012, he was convicted of the murder of Estella Damien and sentenced to death by hanging by the high courts sitting at Bukabo Bukaba in criminal case number 61 of 2008. Dissatisfied with the said decision, the applicant appealed to the Court of Appeal of Tanzania, sitting at Bukaba in criminal appeal number 154 of 2013, which was dismissed in its entirety for lack of merit on the 17th of March, 2014. On the 2nd of April, 2014, the applicant filed a, no a notice of, of motion for review of the Court of Appeals decision, which he claims was pending by the time he filed his application before this court. Prayers of the parties. The applicant prays the court to grant him the following orders and declarations. One, that the respondent state violated his rights under articles four, five, and seven of the charter. Two, that the respondent state took, that the respondent state take appropriate measures to remedy the violation of his rights under the charter. Three, that the respondent state set aside the death sentence imposed on him and remove him from the death row. Four, that the respondent state amends its penal code and related legislation concerning the death sentence to make it compliant with Article 4 of the African Charter. Five, that the respondent state release him from prison. And lastly, six, that the respondent state pay rep reparations in such an amount as the court deems fit. The respondent states in return praise the court to find one, that the court is not vested with jurisdiction to adjudicate over the application. Two, that the applicant has no locus to file the application before the court and hence should be denied access to the court as per Article 5 sub 3 and Article 34 sub 6 of the protocol. Three, that the application be dismissed as it does not meet the admissibility requirements stipulated under Rule 40 sub 5 of the Rules of Court. Four, that the application be dismissed as it does not meet the admissibility requirements stipulated under Rule 40 sub 6 of the Rules of Court. And lastly, that the application be dismissed. The respondent state further praised the court to grant the following orders. One, 
that the respondent state did not violate Article 2 of the Charter, two, that the respondent state did not violate Articles 3, Sub 1, and 2 of the Charter, three, that the applicant's request for re-evaluation of the evidence be denied, and that the court declares that it lacks jurisdiction to do so. Four, that the respondent state did not violate accepted principles of human rights and international law. Five, that the respondent state did not violate articles 13 sub 1 and 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6A, and 107A, and 107 sub B of the Constitution of the United Republic of Tanzania. Six, that the applicant continue to serve his sentence Seven, that the application be dismissed in its entirety. Eight, and the last, that all the relief sought by the applicants be denied. After due deliberation, the court arrived at its judgment. I will just read the operative parts of the judgment. For these reasons, the court unanimously on jurisdiction dismisses the objection to its material jurisdiction, and the court declares that it has jurisdiction. On admissibility, the court dismisses the objection to the admissibility of the application, declares that the application is admissible. On the merits, the court holds that the respondent state did not violate the applicant's right to a fair trial, protected under Article 7, Sub 1 and B of the Charter, with regard to the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty by a competent court or tribunal. The court further holds that the respondent state did not violate the applicant's right to defense, protected under Article 7, Sub 1 and C of the Charter, with regard to the provision of effective legal representation and calling of additional witnesses. The court also holds that the respondent state did not violate the applicant's right to a fair trial, protected under Article 7, Sub 1, Sub D of the Charter, with regard to the right to be tried by an impartial court or tribunal. By a majority of eight judges for and two judges against, Justice Rafa Benashu and Blaise Shikaya dissenting, the court holds that the respondent state did not violate the applicant's right to a fair trial, protected under articles, Article 7, Sub 1, Sub D of the Charter, with regard to the right to be tried within a reasonable time. By a majority of eight judges for and two judges against, Justice Blaise Shikaya and Domisa B. and Sabesa dissenting, the court holds that the respondent state violate, violated the applicant's right to, be, to life protected under Article 4 of the Charter in relation to the mandatory imposition of the death penalty by failing to allow the judicial officer's discretion to take into account the nature of the offense and the circumstances of the offender. The court further holds that the respondent state violated the applicant's right to dignity and not to be subjected to cruel, inhuman, or degrading punishment and treatment protected under Article 5 of the Charter in relation to the imposition of the death penalty by hanging. Unanimously on reparation, first peculiar reparation, the court does not, find, does not grant reparation for material prejudice. The court, however, grants the applicant's prayer for reparation for moral prejudice suffered and awards him the sum of Tanzania shillings 300,000. The court further orders that the orders the respondent state to pay the sum ordered, as read as earlier read, free from tax, as fair compensation to be made within six months from the date of notification of this judgment, failing which it will be required to pay interest on areas 
calculated on the basis of the applicable rates of the Central Bank of Tanzania throughout the period of delayed payments until the amount is fully paid. On non-pecuniary reparation, the court does not grant the applicant's prayer for release. The court, however, orders the respondent state to revoke the death sentence imposed on the applicant and remove him from the death roll. The court further orders the respondent state to take all necessary measures within six months from the notification of this judgment to remove the mandatory imposition of the death penalty from its laws. The court orders the respondent state to take all necessary measures within six months from the notification of this judgment to remove hanging from its laws as a method of execution of the death penalty. The court further orders the respondent state to take all necessary measures within one year of the notification of this judgment for the rehearing of the case on the sentencing of the applicant through a procedure that does not allow the mandatory imposition of the death sentence and oppose the discretion of the judicial officer. The court orders the respondent state to publish this judgment within a period of three months from the date of notification on the websites of the judiciary and the Ministry for Constitutional and Legal Affairs and ensure that the text of, the ju of this judgment is accessible for at least one year after the date of publication. On implementation and reporting, the court orders the respondent state to submit to the, this court within six months from the date of notification of this judgment, a report on the status of implementation of the decision set forth herein, and thereafter every six months until the court considers that there has been full implementation thereof. On cost, the court orders each party to bear its own cost. This judgment is signed by Modibo Sako, the vice president, Ben Kyoko, judge, Ben Rafa Benashu, judge, Susan Menge, judge, Tujeleni Aro Chizomila, judge, Shafika Bensaula, judge, Blaise Shikaya, judge, Stella I. Anukam, judge, Domisa B. Nsabesa, judge, Dennis D. Ajay, judge, and Robert Eno, registrar. In accordance with Article 28.7 of the Protocol and Rule 70, sub 2 of the Rules, the dissenting opinions of Justice Rafa Benashu and Justice Blaise Shikaya are appended to this judgment. In accordance with Article 28.7 of the, of the Protocol, and Rule 73 of the Rules, the declaration of justice in the, in the Dumesa B. in Sabesa is equally appended to this judgment. And this judgment is done at Arusha this fourth day of June in the year 2024 in English and French the English test being authoritative. Merci, Monsieur le Président. This is the decision of the court. Uh, uh, case number 031-2017, Kabalabala, Kadumbongi, and another United versus the United Republic of Tanzania. This uh, decision will be read by Honorable Justice Chizumila. You have the floor is the matter of Kabalabala Kadumbagula and Daudi Magunga versus the United Republic of Tanzania. It's application number 031 of 2017 judgment. The court composed of Modibo Sako Vice President Ben Kiyoko, Rafa Ben Ashu, Susan Menge, Tujilane Arachizumila, Chafika Ben Saula, Blaze Chikaya, Stella I Anukam, Dumisa Bin Sebeza, Dennis D. Ajay, Judges, 
and Robert Eno Registrar. In accordance with Article 22 of the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, on the establishment of an African Court on Human and People's Rights, herein after referred to as the Protocol, and Rule 9.2 of the Rules of Court, herein referred to as the rules, Justice Imani D. Abud, President of the court and a national of Tanzania did not hear the application. Facts of the matter. The applicants together with two others who are not part of the proceedings before this court were charged with abduction and gang rape at the district court of Kibondo. The district court acquitted the applicants of the abduction and gang rape charge but found them guilty of rape on 30th November 2000 in criminal case number 22 of 2000. The first applicant was sentenced to 40 years imprisonment as the principal, while the second applicant who was aged 16 at the time of the offense was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. Who was aged 16 at the time of the offense. There is some interference from the Kiswahili booth. Please, can the Kiswahili interpreter mute his microphone? Can we continue now? Has it been settled? I will repeat. The first applicant was sentenced to 40 years imprisonment as the principal while the second applicant, who was aged 16 at the time of the offense, was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment as an arbiter. The other two co-accused were acquitted of all charges. The applicants appealed the district court's decision through criminal appeal number 67 of 6-8-2003 at the High Court in Tabora. In a decision of 18 May 2006, the High Court substituted the applicant's conviction of rape with a conviction of gang rape and sentenced them to life imprisonment. The applicants further appealed to the Court of Appeal respectively in criminal appeals number 128 and 129 of 2007, where the appeals were dismissed in their entirety for lack of merit on 5 November 2009. In 2010, the second applicant then filed an application for review of the Court of Appeals decision through criminal application number one of 2010, which was dismissed on 4 August 2017 for lack of merit. Prayers of the parties. The applicants pray the court to grant the following orders and declarations. One, that the court is vested with jurisdiction to adjudicate the application. 
two, that the application has met the admissibility requirements provided by Rule 45 of the Rules of Court. Three, that the application has met the admissibility requirements provided by Rule 46 of the Rules of the Court. That the application be declared it admissible. I will repeat that. That the application be declared admissible. And five, that the respondent state violated their rights under Articles 3, 2, 7, 1, 7, 1, C, and 7, 2 of the Charter and Article 10, 2 of the Protocol. The first applicant additionally prays for the court to one, grant him reparations pursuant to Article 27 of the protocol, restore justice where it was overlooked, quash both convictions and sentence imposed on him and release him from prison. And finally, order any other order that the court deems appropriate in the circumstances. On his part, the second applicant additionally prays the court to order the respondent state to pay him compensation in special damages in the amount this court may deem fit. The respondent state prays the court to grant the following orders with regard to the jurisdiction and admissibility of the application. One, that the court is not vested with jurisdiction to adjudicate the application. Two, that the application has not met the admissibility requirements provided by Rule 45 of the Rules of Court. Three, that the application has not met the admissibility requirements provided by Rule 46 of the Rules of Court. Four, that the application be declared inadmissible. And five, that the application be dismissed. With respect to the merits of the application, the respondent state prays the court for the following orders. One, that the government of Tanzania has not violated the first applicant's rights provided under Article 3.2 of the Charter. Two, that the government of Tanzania has not violated the applicant's rights provided under Articles 7.1c of the Charter and Article 10.2 of the Protocol. Three, that the applicants not be awarded reparations. And four, that the cost of this application be borne by the applicants. After declarations, I now move to the operative part. For these reasons, the court unanimously on jurisdiction dismisses the objection to its material jurisdiction and declares that it has jurisdiction. On admissibility, by a majority of nine judges, four, and one judge against, upholds the objection to admissibility on the basis that the application was not filed within a reasonable time in respect of the first applicant. 
declares that the application is inadmissible in respect of the first applicants, unanimously dismisses the objection to admissibility on the basis that the application was not filed within a reasonable time in respect of the second applicant declares that the application is admissible in respect of the second applicant. On merits holds that the respondent state has violated Article 5 of the Charter for introducing corporal punishment, which is inherently inhuman and degrading as an alternative sentence to life imprisonment for offenders under 18 years, holds that the respondent state violated the second applicant's right to defense under Articles 7.1c of the Charter as read together with Article 14.3d of the ICCPR for failure to provide the second applicant free legal assistance during domestic proceedings, holds that the respondent state violated the second applicant's right to a fair trial under Article 15.1 of the ICCPR by failing to consider a more lenient sentence and imposing life imprisonment on him. Holds that the respondent state violated Article 17.3 of the SEERWC as read jointly with Article 41 of the CRC for failing to take into consideration during sentencing the age of the second applicant at the time of commission of the offense. On reparations, pecuniary reparations does not grant reparations for material prejudice. Orders the respondent state to pay the second applicant the sum of Tanzanian shillings one million for moral prejudice ensuing for the violations established in the present judgment. Orders the respondent state to pay the amount indicated under subparagraph 12 free from taxes within six months, effective from the notification of this judgment, failing which it will pay interest on arrears calculated on the basis of the applicable rate of the Bank of Tanzania throughout the period of delayed judgment and until the accrued amount is fully paid. Non-pecuniary reparations orders the respondent state to amend the provisions of its criminal law in order to bring them in line with its international obligations, including those under Articles 15.1 of the ICCPR, 17.3 of the SEERWC, and 41 of the CRC, within two years of the notification of the present judgment. Orders the respondent stage to release the second applicant without delay. On implementation and reporting, 
orders the respondent state to submit to it within six months from the date of notification of this judgment, a report on the status of implementation of the orders set forth herein and thereafter every six months until the court considers that there has been full implementation thereof on costs dismisses the respondent state's prayer that the course of the proceedings before the court be borne by the applicants. Orders each party to bear its own course. This judgment has been signed by the bench that I mentioned before. In accordance with Article 28.7 of the protocol and Rule 73 of the rules, the declaration of Judge Chafika Ben Saula is appended to this judgment. Done at Arusha, this fourth day of June in the year 2024, in English and French, the English text being authoritative. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the ruling of the court. Application number 51. sera lu par l'honorable juge Dumisa Cebesa. Honorable juge Cebesa, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> On this fourth day of June 2024, I read the judgment in the matter of Nzigi Amana Zebron versus the United Republic of Tanzania in application number 051-2016. The court is composed of the Nosiwo Sako Vice President, Ben Kiyoko, Rafa Benashur, Susan Menge, Tujilani R. Shizmila, Shafika Ben Saula, Blaze Chekaya, Stelai Anukam to Mr. Bin Sebeza, Dennis DRJ Judges, and Robert Eno Registrar. In accordance with Article 22, of the protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the establishment of an African Court on Human and People's Rights, yet and after referred to as the protocol. And Rule 9, bracket 2 of the Rules of Court, yet and after referred to as the Rules, Justice Imani D. Abode, President of the Court and the National of Tanzania, did not read hear the application. Subject of the application, facts of the matter. It emerges from the record that the applicant killed one Mr. Fadili Seleman on 8 July 2004. He was charged in the High Court of Tanzania at Tabora with the offense of murder in criminal case number 20 of 2008 and was convicted and sentenced to death by hanging on the 25th of June, 2012. He subsequently appealed his conviction and sentence to the Court of Appeal of Tanzania and Criminal Appeal Number 182 of 2013, which dismissed his appeal in its entirety on the 25th of September, 2013. In April 2020, the applicant's death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. Prayers of the parties. The applicant prays that the court grant the following orders and declarations. One, that the respondent state has violated the applicant's rights under Articles 4, 5, and 7 of the Charter and 3, 6 of VCCR. 
that the respondent state take appropriate measures to remedy the violations of the applicant's rights under the charter. Three, that the respondent state release the applicant from prison. And four, that the respondent state pay reparations to the applicant in such amount as the court deems fit. 